So I've been recently theorizing an e-bike that would have a huge battery that also provides an AC outlet, possibly for camping. I don't quite know yet, but I like the idea of having a huge battery so that I can ride around as much as I want and an AC outlet so that I could do pretty much whatever I want with it. I could go into the mountains and go on my laptop. Who knows what I could do? Point being, I'm really curious to see what we can accomplish. Who knows, maybe we can eventually throw some solar panels on it. The first place that I looked was one of my favorite websites for finding lithium ion cells, and that's 18650batterystore.com. On this site, I found these lithium iron phosphate cells that are selling at quite a low price for the amount of energy that they can hold. If I ordered four of them, I could have 16 cells. This would give me a 16S configuration at 48 volts nominal, which is good enough to power an electric bike. I already have the components to run a 48 volt electric bike, so this works out perfectly. I know that I'm also going to need a BMS and also some sort of enclosure for this, so I decided to see if there exists a case already that would fit these cells. And it does appear to exist for about $230. So currently we're spending about $800 for everything, which isn't bad, but also not that great. I don't really want to spend $800 for this side project. Upon Googling for cases, I actually stumbled upon this battery from batteryhookup.com. They were selling a golf cart battery that was 48 volts, 105 amp hours. The only problem is that the BMS wasn't working. I can't show you the page that it was being sold on because now the page is taken down after they've run out of stock, but I purchased this thing for about $300. I used somebody else's affiliate code to get $15 off. And if you use my affiliate code DIM on this website, you can get about 5% off of your order. It turns out that battery hookup was not too far away from me. It was about a one hour drive. And if I had ordered this golf cart battery right to my door, it would have cost nearly $300 in shipping, almost as much as the pack itself. Shout out to whoever came up with the name Street Road for a street name. After getting there, I got to see the huge warehouse that they had. I'm not allowed to show you guys because I did ask and unfortunately they did not want anyone recording in there. There were two guys there that helped lift this battery into my trunk. The battery itself weighs about 100 pounds, which is quite heavy but also manageable for me. After heading back home, the first thing I wanted to do was open it up and see if and why the BMS wasn't working. I was a little disappointed to see that this uses security bit Torx screws, which I actually don't own. So I ordered a set off Amazon and I unscrewed all the security screws, which it was actually missing like four of them. But anyway, I got the cover off and immediately I'm actually pretty impressed by the overall quality of this. There's a insulating plate. All the bus bars look great. Uh, it's got some nice thick conductors. Each BMS lead has two wires connected to each individual cell. I suppose so that if one wire fails, you still have the other wire. I, I, I guess. Anyway, I was just trying my best to get familiar with this battery. I see that the BMS is located on the right side, closer to the ports. This BMS is pretty chunky. Uh, I couldn't find any information on this BMS. It didn't seem to be standard, but I looked at one or two other videos of golf cart batteries very similar to this one, but not exactly like this one. And they all had a very similar BMS to this. So I, I guess this battery pack in this construction is very common and made somewhere unknown and just sold to different brands and different golf cart companies. So at first it is a little intimidating seeing all the wires but at the end of the day there's a lead for each cell at a different voltage and there's some NTC thermistors. The ports look quite interesting. I wasn't able to find a charger that had this same port style. There's this other buzzer gauge and key slash can RS-485. Um, I don't know. I guess they're for some proprietary communication protocol. I'm not going to use them. All I care about really is the positive and the negative. I removed three screws that were holding this plate down. This is where the BMS was mounted to so that I could get the BMS out. As I was lifting the BMS, I found that the positive and negative power cables were in the way and I just sort of got it out little by little, removing whatever I needed to in order to let it go up. As I was unscrewing all these different connectors that could potentially have power in them, I just wrapped them with some electrical tape to keep them insulated so they don't touch anything and potentially short out. In some cases, this isn't necessary. Like, for example, if there's no power, then it touching ground is not a big deal, but better safe than sorry. So I finally got this thing out and I got a chance to look at the BMS a little bit closely. And as you can see, there is visibly a burnt slash exploded component on this board. I think it could be possible to repair this BMS simply by replacing that and another component. 
Although there's really no guarantee that that would fix it. And I don't know what the part number is because it's you know, destroyed. Above all, this is still a proprietary BMS and I wouldn't be able to go in and configure things on it without some proprietary software. So replacing the BMS outright is just a much better solution rather than trying to repair this one. If I replace it with a BMS of my choosing, I can use an app on my phone to configure the BMS's max discharge, under voltage, over voltage, monitor it, and so on. It is now a new day and I'm in a new work environment. I'm gonna crack open this battery again and we have the new BMS with us, so we're gonna be replacing the BMS. The reason I settled on this BMS was because it has 150 amp discharge. I like Dolly BMS, that's the only one I've used. It connects to an app, which is a decent app, and yeah, it just works. Here I'm going around with a multimeter just to make sure that all the cells are good. There's no reason they shouldn't be, but I just wanna see. So this wire harness right here is what's linked to all of the BMS leads, as well as the thermistors. So we're going to cut off from this connector and just solder on all these wires that'll eventually plug into the Dolly BMS. We have about half of these BMS leads connected to their appropriate places. As you can see, that's the left half of the battery. Now we just got to do the right half. Thankfully, everything is colored in a way that makes it pretty easy to figure out what, what goes from here to here in the wire harness. And I tested the voltage at these leads and I am in fact getting zero, three point something, six point something, etc. So we're good halfway through and uh, not too bad, to be honest. Now all the leads are wired up, and yes, I'm watching Futurama in the background. I checked the voltage, making sure that they're all on the correct cell. It is a little messy, and it is extremely long, but I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to wrap it up with wire loom tape, and uh, that should help prevent, you know, this rubbing against something. I'm going to remove these two standoffs so that we can fit the BMS right there, and just drill straight into the back plate. I didn't really record myself wiring everything, but I just followed this diagram that was in the instruction guide. Our BMS app is working via Bluetooth. We've got it charging at 8 amps right now, and it's good. So I'm just going to close this thing up and then start connecting the inverter to it. I ended up not connecting the inverter, at least not yet. I still have to figure out exactly how I'm going to mount it in a way that it doesn't fly off, because this is going to go on the back of my bike. I did, however, get it connected to my bike. so. I'll just give you a little sneak peek. I'm only using a 750 watt motor here. So although it doesn't have much power, it actually has a lot of torque because it's internally geared, which is just enough to get it to a speed that I like. I don't want to go fast on this thing. This trailer thing is not made for speed. This is like 10 miles per hour tops. So that's what I'm going to stick to. I'm sure there's a lot for me to figure out still. I don't know, but I'm honestly pretty excited at this point that I got this far. Thank you for watching. And to see more content like this, please subscribe to the channel and let me know what you think about the video. Peace.